So a DC jury is deliberating in the Proud Boys seditious conspiracy trial. And they sent a note out to the judge suggesting that they might have a hard time reaching unanimous verdicts on all charges. What happens next? Let's talk about that because justice matters. Hey all, Glenn Kirshner here. So friends, a DC jury is now deliberating in the Proud Boys seditious conspiracy case. The case took about four months to try. I spent some time in and out of the courtroom. I watched some of the closing arguments and the jury is now deliberating. They've been out for about three or four days and they just sent a note out to the judge asking a couple of questions. Here is a copy of that very note. And we're going to focus on the second question. They ask the judge the following. We did not receive instructions on what to do if the jury does not reach unanimity on a charge. How should we proceed in this scenario? So friends, let's talk about what that note means and also, importantly, what that note doesn't mean. But let's start with the new reporting regarding the jury deliberations in the Proud Boys case. Headline, jurors struggle over at least one charge in Proud Boys seditious conspiracy trial. And that article begins, jurors deliberating the fate of five Proud Boys charged with seditious conspiracy in connection with the January 6th attack on the U.S. Capitol appear to be struggling with the charges against at least some of the defendants. The jury sent a note to U.S. District Judge Timothy Kelly Tuesday morning asking for additional instruction, asking what to do if they do not agree on all charges. Quote, we did not receive instructions on what to do if the jury does not reach unanimity on a charge. How should we proceed in this scenario? The note stated in part. The jury began deliberating on Wednesday and did not deliberate on Friday morning, meaning they spent roughly the equivalent of three full days considering the case before sending the note. Judge Kelly ultimately sent a note back to the jury, telling them that they were allowed to deliver a partial verdict and saying to send him a note if they ended up in a situation where they were deadlocked on a charge. Enrique Tario, Joseph Biggs, Ethan Nordine, Dominic Pizzola, and Zachary Reel each face nine counts, including the rare charge of seditious conspiracy under a Civil War era statute. Pizzola, who was caught on video smashing in a window with a Capitol Police shield during the breach, and who admitted to his behavior on the stand, faces an additional charge over the stolen police shield. Okay, friends, let's take this one step at a time. This is going to be something of a Team Justice Law School class. I'll try to keep it moving. I'll try to keep it interesting so you don't tune out or worse, not off. You know, when I'm teaching my criminal justice students at George Washington University, I try very hard to keep it interesting, keep them engaged. And I will say I have some very engaged students. In fact, they inspire me and leave me optimistic all day, every day. But let's take this one step at a time. First of all, the jury has not been deliberating that long. It was a four month trial. They've been deliberating for about four days. We are nowhere near sort of hung jury territory. So the judge properly said, thank you for your note. Go ahead and continue your deliberations. That's step one and that was entirely appropriate for the judge to do. Second step, if the jury sends out another note saying judge, we tried. We're hopelessly deadlocked. We don't see the prospect of a unanimous verdict on one count or another. Then the time will be right for the judge to give them what's called an anti-deadlock instruction. We typically refer to it as an Allen charge. Why Allen? Well, in 1896, there was a case in which a judge gave an anti-deadlock instruction. That issue went all the way up to the Supreme Court and the Supreme Court approved of anti-deadlock instructions. 
So this is what the judge will say to the jury in the event they send another note out saying they are hopelessly deadlocked. It's a fairly short legal instruction and it reads as follows. Members of the jury, you have reported that you have been unable to reach a unanimous verdict in this case. I have decided to suggest a few additional thoughts to you. As jurors, you have a duty to discuss the case with one another and to deliberate in an effort to reach a unanimous verdict if each of you can do so without violating your individual judgment and conscience. Each of you must decide the case for yourself, but only after you consider the evidence impartially and with your fellow jurors. During your deliberations, you should not hesitate to re-examine your own views and change your opinion if you become persuaded that it's wrong. You should not, however, change an honest belief as to the weight or effect of the evidence solely because of the opinions of your fellow jurors or for the mere purpose of returning a verdict. I also remind you that in your deliberations, you are to consider the instructions that I have given you as a whole. You should not single out any part of any instruction, including this one, and ignore others. They are equally important. What I have just said is not meant to rush you or pressure you into agreeing on a verdict. Take as much time as you need to discuss things. There is no hurry. I ask that you now return to the jury room and continue your deliberations with these additional comments in mind. So friends, in my experience, sometimes an anti-deadlock instruction, and there are different versions that are given in different courts and different jurisdictions, sometimes an anti-deadlock instruction has the effect of sort of jump-starting deliberations and jurors begin to perhaps listen a little bit more openly to their fellow jurors, to opposing opinions, and it's not at all unusual after an anti-deadlock instruction is given by the judge for a jury to reach unanimous verdicts. It's also not unusual for juries to be unable to reach unanimous verdicts and for a hung jury to occur and therefore a mistrial to be declared. Okay, friends, let's go on to the next step. What happens if the jury reaches unanimous verdicts on some counts but not other counts? Uh, I'm not gonna go through all of the notes that have been sent out, there have been several, and there is at least some suspicion that the, the Proud Boys jury may be having a hard time reaching a unanimous verdict on the lead count, seditious conspiracy. But it may very well be that they're gonna easily resolve all of the other eight counts against these five defendants with guilty verdicts. And I'm not gonna go into the backstory about why that is sort of the suspicion based on everything we've seen, but Let's just assume hypothetically that they hang on the lead count, the big one, seditious conspiracy, but convict the defendants on all of the other counts. What happens then? First of all, is that a win or is that a loss for the Department of Justice, for the prosecutors who brought these very forward-leaning charges, seditious conspiracy charges, charges which are not often brought in our criminal justice system? I don't think it would be a loss. Now, I know people accuse me of always seeing the justice glass as being half full. I suppose I'm guilty of that. But here's why I say, in my view, it will not be a loss. First of all, if they convict these defendants on all of the other counts, but they hang on the seditious conspiracy count, they're still going to be facing years and perhaps decades in prison. So. The prosecutors will then have lots of leverage over these defendants. And here's the other thing. When a, a, a jury hangs on a count, the prosecutors can retry that count. So think about what the prosecutors will be able to do tactically. They'll be able to step to these five defendants and say, you're now convicted on eight of the nine counts we brought against you. You're now facing years, maybe more than a decade in prison, and it's not over yet because we can retry you on the lead count, the seditious conspiracy count, if we choose to. Or you can now minimize the damage that you've done to yourself. You can decide to start cooperating with us, tell us everything 
you can about your fellow Proud Boys, about other white supremacist groups, and about any political actors, if you have any truthful information about Trump and company, for example. And if you do, we won't rebring the seditious conspiracy charge, the lead charge. And if you do, we may also let the judge know at the time you are sentenced on your eight convictions that you did assist the government, the prosecution. You did try to help make right what you all made so very wrong on January 6th, so you can potentially minimize your sentence, your prison time. How about it? So that will actually be added leverage the prosecutors will have in the event the jury hangs on the lead count, the seditious conspiracy charge. Now, there will be some who will trumpet that this, this is a great failure. The government did not succeed on the lead charge, only all these lesser charges. Well, you know, there's nothing lesser about charges like obstructing law enforcement, obstructing an official proceeding, obstructing law enforcement of, during civil disorder, assaulting officers, etc. You know, if the prosecutors win convictions on all those counts, that ain't no small potatoes. And here's the thing. Give me a prosecutor who is willing to take the difficult, challenging, politically charged count of seditious conspiracy, a rarely deployed charge. Give me prosecutors who are unafraid of losing. Those are the kind of prosecutors I want handling the insurrection cases, and frankly, all cases at the Department of Justice. I want without fear or favor kind of prosecutors who aren't so afraid of losing that they decline to bring the challenging charges. So the way I see it, there will be no shame and there will be some tactical upside if the jury hangs on the lead count, seditious conspiracy, but convicts the so-called Proud Boy defendants of all other charges. At the end of the day, I will see that as justice. And justice matters. Friends, thank you for bearing with me through that lengthy tutorial. Please stay safe. Please stay tuned. And I look forward to talking with you all again soon.